Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Lucette, the Unlucky. Let's play Skyrim forever. And uh, here we are in Riften. We just joined the Dawn Guard, and we're hunting vampires or something. And uh, we're gonna go check out the keep here, see what's going on in town. Have our scouts come up with any information on these reports of dragons? <coughs> yes. No, oh, come to gloat, have we? To poke fun at the Jarl's youngest son? <laughs> I have no idea who you are, guys. It killed guy. several soldiers before it departed. I want you to speak to the city guard. Make sure there's a contingency plan in effect in well, case... Well, we're not doing the dragons in this game. At least not so far. I've also taken the liberty in preparing yeah, yeah, yeah. a private Re carriage. Social distancing. Yeah, I get it. All right. Good. We know all about if that. Did you have some sort of right official business here? Uh, just Did looking for work? No. No. Just looking for stuff to do, basically. Was it delivery? I can't remember. All the other towns you go to. Excuse my disorganization, palace. but I'm in the middle of some delicate experiments. They give experiments. you stuff to do. All right. But we're talking to the yes, wizard. Yes, I we're an could alchemist. use some help with that. An assistant, perhaps? No, no, no. Maybe a familiar. And we're also a conjurer, no, too messy. so we know about familiars. Well, at any rate, organization is not my strong suit. Not at all. I need as much help as I can get. That's in our dog fact, Miko barking there. If in the you background. could retrieve a few things for me, I could start on my next of set course, of experiments. Of course, everyone's got something we need. Let me guess, some precious gems. As you can imagine, I tend to forget things <laughs> A couple often. people last episode asked around. us for those. I really must learn to put these things away. All right, let's see. Oh, well, stuff she what lost. What I need is my Dwemer stirring spoon, my Auric Halcom ingot, okay. and my Grand Soul yeah, gem. Well, pretty much uh, more fact, gems. I could yeah. Use them immediately. But this one is hers. Bring those items back to me, and I'll be happy to is experiment actually hers. on them. No, no. So it's not something right. we'd be able to sell. I'd be happy to reward you. <laughs> experiment on you. All right, tell me where to go. All right, so Excellent. we got a lot of quests actually, I can't and wait. this one's more specific. Yeah, than well, getting flawless why emeralds. Why are you still for these standing idiots. here? Oh right, you need to know where they are. That would help. No. Someone so. actually interested in what I'm doing. So. Amazing. Well, <coughs> allow me to explain. All right, let's see what she's up My to. My experimentation involves a magical construct I like this and wizard. a reagent that will allow the construct to maintain a field of permanent harmonic energy. Hmm. <coughs> okay, uh, fascinating. Aha! <coughs> so, you're a student of theoretical applied harmonics. Well, the dog's Putting telling me what to say. constant of universal inversion for a moment, how would you approach the problem? Draw the harmonic energy into the reagent, or allow it to generate its own field? Miko, what do you think? Uh, Miko said... Something about... Ca seven? seven. <laughs> Astonishing. I hadn't considered that. I mean, it would take months, years to work out the differentials. But what a revolutionary concept! Wait, wait. I can see a minor problem in your theory. Without a soul siphon, how would you prevent siphon. permanent magicka burn? Ouch. Uh. Are you completely Swallow insane? A soul gem. Swallow a soul gem? Sure. That has to be the most brilliant and unexpected solution I've heard in a long time. Okay. It solves all of my problems well, and keeps the field stable. You know, that's just a little zany little uh, now all conversation. Need... Wait, what were we talking but, about? But you know what? That helps establish this character as uh, someone who's like doing Let's stuff see. that no one else is doing, or Last some maybe has I some knowledge that even these court at my wizards dear don't. Friend know. Bodie's house in Iverstead, Felstar Farm, I believe it's called. Mm, Iverstead. The Oric Halcom Engine should still be at Winterhold at the Frozen Hearth Inn. Definitely haven't been there. I don't know why I didn't just take it with me. And last is the soul gem. I left okay. that one in Windhelm at the White File Alchemy Shop. Well, everyone's talking about Windhelm. Trade too. Uh, it's oh, just well. up the road from here, really. So uh, I think we're going to end up there eventually, though so not anytime soon. You wish to master the arcane arts. So this quest is going to take quite a while to finish. 
All right, let's see what she's got for sale. Uh, of course, all these court wizards have uh, well stocked in scrolls and spell tomes. Now, I've been resisting buying spell tomes. I just like to find them laying in the wild and stuff like that. So I might pick up something and we have more gold than ever right now because we've sold a bunch of stuff and we haven't been doing our training in this town yet. And we're also kind of maybe saving up for a house. We've been offered two houses in two different locations. So one is 5,000 gold with additional expenses because you have to build it yourself. And the other one's 10K outright. So we're not even close to that. So not buying any scrolls, I mean spells, unless something just caught my eye there. And uh, it doesn't look like I have too much to sell either, so... Okay... Not a great, now, where uh... where did I put those spiders? Not a As great little shopping spree house car, there. I would ask that you maintain a respectable distance from her okay. at all times. Yes. Thanks for reminding everyone. Indeed. There have been multiple distance. attempts on the R's life. We're not certain if it's the Dark Brotherhood or simply Imperial uh, Sympathizers. Dark Brotherhood, We've now. also had run-ins with spies attempting to probe our security for weaknesses. I work with the city guard to make certain they okay. fail. There's a lot of intrigue At the end of in the day, Riften, of course. I'm the last line of defense for the Yar. I will not allow her to right. fall. The Thieves Guild is here, and uh, Maven Blackbriars. Some type of, like, kingpin of Liars crime or something. Liars and bastards. Every one of them. I'd have their heads on a pike if it wasn't for the war effort. All I need is a dozen men, and we could march into the Ratway and burn them out like rodents. Oh, my God. Stormcloaks won't have it, though. Too busy keeping the Imperial forces at bay. All right. Well, I'm we don't need to finish you. asking. We know what the right way is. So we've asked well, everyone that. As Riften steward, I'm afraid I can provide only limited assistance. All right, well, but let's speak see your what mind. You have to say. As steward, I serve as an intermediary between the Jarl and her right, subjects. Well, that's us. I also handle the less important and day-to-day -day policies that affect daily life in Riften. Okay. Lately, I've had my hands full suppressing these ridiculous accusations of corruption oh, in the keep. Oh, what? Who could be corrupt in Riften? There are those that believe the Jarl does nothing for this city. That it's corrupt and run by the Blackbriar family. Oh, well, isn't that Maven Blackbriar that right there? False. <laughs> we are me. fully in control of everything. She's like eating breakfast with Maven Blackbriar <laughs> is the owner of the largest and most profitable business in all Skyrim. The Blackbriar Meadery. Mm -hmm. Well, We're we prefer wine. In Riften. She brings stability, opportunities for employment, and strategic mm -hmm. value well, to our city. That's how they get you. All right, what I'd about the thieves' guild? I hardly call them a guild. guild. More like unorganized oh, rabble. unorganized, okay. In fact, I wouldn't say they were a threat at all. No, just robbing no, people's houses, fixing on numbers, no threat at all. Okay. You're welcome in well, Riften. Well, she's obviously uh, to obey protecting the Thieves' Guild from uh, being to Riften, attacked traveler. like the other guy wanted to do. I hope the road fared well for you. All right, let's see what she has to say. We're all eager to see them brought to justice. Maven Blackbriar has assured me that they're being dealt with appropriately. Oh, okay, Maven's in charge. As one of our city's most influential sure. citizens, she's taken it upon herself to oh, oversee their incarceration. She's directly going to deal with the Sadly, Thieves' Guild. proving elusive. But I have confidence yeah, no, that nobody knows give up what they're up the to. City has been rid of them all. Yeah, this lady. Okay, so she's not Good conspiring with you. Maven. Welcome she's just an Bell idiot, Keep. I think. Yarl <laughs> Layla Stewart, Anuriel. All right. Well, here's I Maven herself. I presume you're me for a good reason. Well, we've heard a lot about you, and uh, <laughs> you're, the, you're the one to of see, course. I guess, right? Nothing gets done without my approval all in right, this well. city. I have the Jarl's ear and the guards in my okay. pocket. Okay. Anyone makes trouble for me, and I pay a visit to the Thieves' Guild. Make me angry, oh, and she I just admits it. She's just like, yeah, I control all... You I, do they well got to all of them helping me out. Time you make such a stupid wow, we're just trying to make small talk and tell you that you're important. And here you are threatening to I murder us done. with the Dark Brotherhood, which we're going to take over probably in this. I think we're going to maybe even become the head of the Dark Brotherhood. No, oh, come to gloat, have we? To poke fun at the Jarl's youngest son? Well, why would I do that? I don't even know Because who you I are. did something not a soul in this blood-stained house of war has the backbone to do. Okay. Dared to speak my oh, mind. Yeah, well. I dared speak of the Empire and the lies that have been spread by Ulfric, the leader of the Stormcloaks. Oh, this guy's an Imperial. Now my mother stripped me of my heritage yep. and incarcerated me here like a common well, criminal. And my brother has all but disowned me. Yeah, well, you like Be the Thalmor. Be wary of what you say around here, friend. You'll find not all take kindly to insurrection. Well, we're not taking sides, but if we did, I don't know. Ulfric only Probably cares about Ulfric. one thing. Ulfric. Well, that, no, He's ordained no, 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 no. himself the future High King of Skyrim. 
and steps on anyone that gets in his way. This guy seems like a brat. He's begun a rebellion against those that wish to eradicate the worship of Talos and uses it as his rallying cry. His cause may be true, but the man is a lie. All he holds in his heart is lust for the throne. Mm. All right. Well, we haven't met Old Frickin in this playthrough All yet, right, so then. we don't have an opinion of that. I might have an opinion of that from some other playthroughs I've done, but like our character doesn't care. We just want to know why that guy's sitting there whining. And uh, we're gonna peek around the palace a little. There's a guard here, but fancy yourself an alchemist, hmm? Never could get the All hang. Right, so we got the little uh, vials on our belt, so he knows we're an alchemist, and uh, we're just peek. Don't worry about us. We're just peeking around the uh, quarters in the Jarl's palace and uh, eyeing some fine jewelry here. Which, of course, if we were doing a thieves guild playthrough, we probably would steal and fence there. And uh, even though she's working with the thieves guild, uh, that'd be pretty amusing, actually. So uh, I've definitely done that before. Probably every jewelry case in this game I've probably robbed at some point, you know? <laughs> I mean, a lot of them are pretty uh, memorable. I, I literally definitely remember sneaking around these guards, stealing everything in the palace, and uh, you can go right safe, under, I right hope. downstairs is the uh, rat way that they were talking about with the uh, Thieves Guild. All right, well, here, let's just go to the Jarl chambers themselves. That was probably the uh, helper's quarters or something. Oh, we got three doors here. So I can't quite remember what I'm, Well, one thing I am looking for is some uh, roll of paper. Oh, and this is the stone. So th we we actually do have to eventually go to the Thieves Guild to get that appraised. I thought we had found one of those already. I, I know I mentioned it in the last episode, so that's what I was talking about. There's a mysterious stone, and uh, it's just like a quest to collect them all, and it's kind of hard because there's no markers or anything, so... You basically have to go everywhere in the game, or of course, you know, there's resources online where you can look it up, but I remember when I first was playing Skyrim, I never bothered to look them up or find all of them, but I, I had a decent amount just from playing. Alright, well, we're just seeing what's in here. We're not going to take anything, right? Now, I th do need a one roll of paper. It, it might be what I'm looking for here. I did play this like a week ago. <laughs> And I'm just doing the voiceover now. So, if you get a roll of paper, you can make this book to make fur cloaks and stuff. So, for some reason, I can't find any paper in this game. It's it's pretty rare. The vendors never have it. I've seen it in dungeons. In pre you know, you, it's one of those things you always kind of ignore. And I've seen it in dungeons, in other playthroughs, and it's definitely in cabinets like that at some point. So, I... I actually ended up in the Wolf the Worm series. I actually think I did it off camera. Uh, where I stole... Or no, I might have done it on camera. Where anyway, I, I had to steal one from the palace. Uh, up in solitude, I think. Or no, it... Yeah, I don't even remember. Anyway, I had to steal a roll of paper. Oh no, it was in Whiterun. And then... Just to make a fur cloak. Because you need to make the book with the recipes in it or something. So we're just poking around. Uh, and we're being mysterious. And, you know, we are a mysterious character. We're not a thief. We don't steal unless we have to. Dog, come on. But we're definitely like a dark, mysterious character who would be sneaking around maybe just to gather intel or, you know, something. Wow, this is a nice little area here. It's a very strange claustrophobic balcony not a very relaxing place to go sit outside I'm not quite sure what that is oh I guess it's protected for the uh, the Jarl to go outside so no nobody can attack them or something so uh, we're gonna head back down here now and see what else there is to do in Riften I think we have a quest from the innkeeper probably so hey, a Hold lot of times. A warm bed, would you? Okay. As Yar Leila's house guard, right, well, we I would ask. Oh, here we go. We got old store here. All times. Nice. All right, we'll we'll definitely be coming here. Let's see if they got any free samples on the shelf. Mm, nothing. Just got a whole shop. That's the nicest setup I think of all these court wizards. I mean, actually, the one in Windhelm 
Well, he's got like a spooky little room you have to go to the end of the hall in, and uh, that's like, that's nice for like the atmosphere. But this is like a legit store. I mean, that's like a pretty, uh, pretty cool little counter she had there. Okay, now we heard a rumor about something in Windhelm about the uh, this kid trying to summon the Assassin's Guild, and I do plan on becoming an assassin in this game not for a while i uh, probably got like 10 10 or 20 hours until that's gonna happen i think because we're gonna do the dawn guard for the most part first might overlap them uh, we'll see how that goes but just from side quest and the opening quest of dawn guard that's gonna be 10 hours easily so yes but we are making our first move by coming here and seeing what's going on none of you riffraff is getting adopted ever Nobody needs oh, you. Oh, this lady is wicked. You. That, my darling, so, is why yeah. you're here. Why you will always be here so, until the day you come of age and get thrown into that wide, horrible oh world. Oh, my God. Now, what do you all say? We, we love, love you, girl. girl. Thank, Thank you for your kindness. Oh, oh, my God. They're totally brainwashed. That's better. So, now yeah, some up, kid escaped, we heard. Snacks. And uh, I guess he wants to put a hit out on her, right? Because... They said he's trying to hire the Assassin's Guild. So let's see if we can talk to some of these kids or uh, the helper lady here and see what's going on. All right, hey, you how really you shouldn't be here. Well, we're here. I'm sorry, but the children aren't up for adoption right now. I'm you not, should go. We're not trying to adopt a kid. We're just at, Sadly, trying to find out yes. what's going on. Even the townsfolk have taken to calling her Grella the Kind. Oh, yeah. Her okay. very existence has become something of a running <laughs> joke. Grelod runs this orphanage because she's old and set in her ways and doesn't know any other life. These children need love and comfort. Aww. I try. Aww. But I'm sorry. You should go. The children aren't up for adoption, and it's cruel to get their hopes up. All right. Besides, Grelod hates Can you imagine them visitors. wanting to get adopted by us? We're wearing a vampire armor, and we look like if a there's nothing else, spooky. I really must ask you to leave. <laughs> All right, well, no, we're talking to the kids first. Please. I'm really afraid of Grella. Oh, jeez, get me out of here. She was so oh, mad. I got double talking. the beatings that day. Oh, my God. Aventus. Yeah, a what's up with Aventus? Aventus Aretina. He was nice, but really quiet and sad because his mother just died. Oof. He ran away, back home to Windhelm. Samuel told me he's trying to get some murderer people to come here and cook the Redland. I really hope he does. Yep. He will. <laughs> mm -hmm. He will. It's too bad the orphanage ain't letting us kids get adopted. I'd be the best son ever. Aw. Well, I, what I about these other kids? He's like, that's kind of rude to the other kids there, you know, right? Roar. I mean. Really? All right, lady. That's all you riftin I'm not a riftin person. I just got here. It's like my first day here. All right. Well, let's rob her. No, we gotta unlock. I do hope mommy and father <laughs> come to get me soon. Hi there. Ever since Aventus Aretina, he only lived here for a while. All right. That's I think his well. mother got sick and died or something. Anyway, he's gone now. He ran All right. away. So yeah. Well, we basically, uh, I would say we did just basically just start this quest now. So we started the Dawn Guard and the Assassins Guild Dark Brotherhood quest at the same time. But it is going to be a while before we actually make it up to Windhelm. It's not our destination. And we might just end up there if some other quests take us there. Like, let's say the Dawn Guard. Uh, we have to go there for some reason. Then we might start that quest, too. So uh, I'd like to do it that way and, you know, not really plan it out except in these broad strokes. And then we'll just see what happens, you know. So this is a really, really good start to our character. And now I feel like we are in act two of the character now where we're establishing now what she's going to be doing for the next uh you know the big middle chunk of the whole game basically is uh gonna be dawn guard and assassin's guild i keep calling it that it's called the dark brotherhood in this game so Shit. now that's all the way up there of course that we have to go to so all right let's see i'm gonna just uncheck some of these and we do have this bandit leader at Treva's Watch, which is near, pretty, pretty nearby. It's definitely a little bit of a hike. So that, let's see what else we have. We have so many quests. I wish you could get rid of some of these quests, but I guess, uh, you know, 
Of course, the first time I played the game, I did all these quests all together and became the leader of most of the guilds and everything. Although I didn't do, I did two main characters, and in well, one the one of them I did Civil of War, and Can one of them I did the main quest, and I didn't do both in either Winston. one. So those were my two big main characters. Gems, potions, exotic ingredients, I had them all back in the day. And today is actually the uh, the anniversary of Oblivion coming out, so. That's interesting. All right, so we're going to go to the alchemist shop down by the water here. Yes, of course, we are an alchemist. We've been leveling that up more than anything in this game. And uh, it's, that's been the main part of Act 1, I would say. And now we also uh, kind of leveled that up and kind of climaxed with that where we're making potions and making money and, and using them in combat. So I feel like that was a good kind of ending of, of Chapter 1 also. And now we're the Dawn Guard. We're more experienced with potions, and uh, we're moving on. My mixture could be burning as right. we speak. Okay, well there are. Well, the moisture in the air is better for the ingredients. Oh, it isn't every day that you get your hands on fresh nern root or painted troll fat. I it also makes it easier to gather water when the canal is right out the front door. All right. Besides, I also prefer the quiet. I didn't open this business for browsing. Come in, buy what you need, and get out. Mm, okay. Hardly. In fact, that was a weird question. Considering someone standing right behind I have to put up with. My wife, Half York. Well, she's a necessary evil, I suppose. Oof. Not a lick of talent when it comes to alchemy, but she keeps me fed. <laughs> All right. Then there's Ingen Blackbriar, bright young thing and oh. a worthy apprentice. When she isn't wasting my rare Okay, so one of the Blackbriars works here. We just met the uh, matron of the family. Take a look. So I already picture that we are going to uh, become friends with the Blackbriar that works here. And, you know, I'm not sure what our relationship is going to be with Maven. Because, like I said, we're going to be uh, involved in the Assassin's Guild. And she has a connection with that. So kind of just going to have a wait and see attitude with that. We're definitely going to be dealing with her. And... I'm not sure if we're going to be on her side or not. Uh, she's a powerful person to know, but whenever there's a powerful person, it, there's always a tendency, if you're, especially if you're a darker character, to want to become more powerful than them and maybe take over whatever operation they're doing. Uh, so we'll see. I, I think that might be where we're headed, but I don't quite exactly yes, remember yes, the parameters of all these quests. And like, we might not even get that deep into those quest lines because we're not joining the uh, Thieves Guild. But I like doing, I like those quests. I like the uh, the way they deal with like, you know, the industry and the government because she is uh, has the metery in town. And so it's like, you know, the gangsters, it's almost like uh, bootleggers or something uh, in the Prohibition era. There's not Prohibition, but you know, she's got like the gangs on her side. It's like pretty intriguing to me, so we might do something. If you're of that. looking for a handout, you want to speak with my husband. Well, I'm Roll is around somewhere, not. planning to feed the poor with his nonsense about Mara. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we know that guy. All right. So yeah, here we are in Riften, and I think we're gonna actually go on that quest now to go kill more bandits we've been doing an awful lot of that and uh, you know it's just a fun way to release tension and test out our potions on a live uh, combat experience i do kind of wish that we had a few more you know variety in our quest than like constantly fighting bandits but hey you you get the jobs that they give you and since we're not really doing you know the main quest and stuff like that we're not dealing with the drogger and and stuff like that I know in the, you know, if you do that, and also if you do the College of Winter Old quest, th there's a lot of caves like that in those quests, so. For some reason, we haven't even had one, I don't think. <laughs> you know, we haven't fought any undead, but that's actually good for our character. Like, as we advance in the game, we'll see more mysterious stuff, like, because we are a Conjuration student, so it actually makes sense that, like, as we start to raise dead and stuff like that, that's when we start encountering the walking dead and, uh, you know, all the things in crypts and tombs that you uh, see there and other magic users and stuff like that. We haven't fought any of those, but we have fought a bunch of vampires and uh, vampires on the road and also as part of quests. So 
it's a really nice I love to limit what the character's doing so I actually don't feel bad about that even though like there's no real connection between her fighting bandits like she's not a warrior that would necessarily be doing that but I think it's worked out uh, just because I'm not gonna totally avoid doing the quest that the innkeepers give us so I always like to do those quests just for gold and uh, combat experience of course and it gets you to different locations also. So as you see, we have to go quite a little ways to here and uh, walk through this nice farm that we wouldn't otherwise be walking through where we can get wheat, one of the most valuable alchemy ingredients in the game. So we can probably make uh, a good maybe 1,000, 2,000 gold just from those five wheats, I'll bet, along with a few other ingredients that we're almost sure to have those too. All right, we're stuck on a chicken there for a second. So they're hard at work in the middle of the night uh, tilling the uh, wheat. Not quite sure why they don't go to bed, but uh, sometimes the game can be a little wonky with the time schedule, I guess. And a few other interesting alchemical ingredients from the torch bugs. And there was a Luna moth that we let go. No real need to stop and get all of them. So yeah, we just basically have to follow the path of this water here. So, shouldn't be that hard. I don't know if there's actually a path along the water, but we can at least use that as a reference point. Just make sure we don't see too many mud crabs or other creatures, but at least I have the immersive creatures mod turned off, which I had on in the Wolf the Worm playthrough I did a month ago. Uh, where there was a bunch of like frogmen and really creepy scary stuff that like uh, oh, I don't need to deal with any of that stuff right now. I just wanted to make this a little cleaner and I do love the You know intensity that those fights in that in that playthrough had I had some really crazy stuff And there's more crazier stuff to come once I pick that back up again But uh, I don't I definitely only want certain playthroughs using that mod uh, nothing to see here. Just a bunch of uh, hunters or whatever. And uh, they usually don't have anything for sale that we need, so it's not even worth it. All right, so we're just trying to find the water again here. And uh, we are going the wrong way a little bit. It seemed like we were headed down to the water. But it's really easy to get turned around on this terrain. I'm notorious at getting lost in this game. Oh, here we go. There's tons of wolves out of nowhere. And something uh, just happened. All right. Should we get bring our friend out? All right. We have that petty soul gem to charge with. So. Oh, I forgot to equip it because I charged it. All right. Oh, it's a saber cat. That is not good. There, kitty, kitty, kitty. This is not good at all. So, uh, we can only get one zap out of that. Now, let's... Let's poison our blade with a slow poison. So, yeah, we've had trouble before fighting bigger things, but now we have all these poisons, and we can paralyze it and slow it down and maybe make it attack the other... Uh, the other one, but it does say level 10, so I don't know if this might be above level 10, so that might not work. Let's see if it works. Yeah, look at that! Watch this! Oh, maybe not. Did it just attack us instead? What just happened? Alright, well, I might still have some of that on there, because I do get four hits off of it, so let's uh, up our health a little bit while we're paused. Because, oh, uh, one more hit and we're probably going to die. This is a really tough fight, and uh, unfortunately, but also uh, I kind of like it, is we're going to be breaking up the action a lot in this playthrough because we're doing so many potions and stuff, and I, I will end up hockeying some of them. Look at this. Oh, we had a Spriggan and two Saber Cats, and now we have the... We got the Saber Cat to go attack the Spriggan, but now we have to restore our health, and we can regenerate our health, and this is also a Stamina Poison now, so... We, uh, we're going to heal a little more, and now we will also switch to our sparks. Oh my god, that thing is flying. And now we did a, look at all the stamina damage we just did on that cat. It, it definitely did 
make it stagger a little bit and it was glowing and it took a little longer to recover and jump at us. So that worked out really well. We have this Spriggan up behind that is probably just as powerful as a Saber Cat in this game. They're both really tough enemies at early levels and we're at a, you know, a little higher level now. So we can deal with this fight, but we are going to require a bunch of strategy here. And can we paralyze it? Yeah. Now this might be a waste because it's almost dead. But look at that. It fell right to the ground. And this is the thing with Spriggans. They will heal themselves during the battle. So a paralysis spell is key to keeping this. And there's like bugs attacking us as well some, or something. Is that part of the Spriggan? That is really scary. It seemed like a separate beast swarm there. All right, we're poisoning it again. It's been a while since I fought Spriggan. All right, well, we actually made it through this fight alive without even having to die and reload our save. So that's a huge accomplishment. And we are gonna save now, uh, just in case there's another beast lurking in the shadows or something. But wow, we actually killed two saber cats and a Spriggan. Uh, first by turning the t one of the saber cats against the other two and then uh, using a variety of potions to poison our blade as well as heal ourselves even quicker than we would have if we weren't an alchemist. So I feel like that was a huge test of our power as a character. And, uh, you know, this is the reason they recruited us for the Dawn Guard, because so we can handle ourselves out here, you know? So this is actually super exciting. There's the other Saber Cat. This is the... I always want a spell just to find... The, I think there might be a spell. I want a spell just to find things uh, that you killed, especially when they get turned into a pile of ash, which <laughs> makes it really hard in this type of terrain. You kind of have to remember where things are and... I'm not very good at uh, keeping my bearings to begin with, and when I start getting turned around in a fight, forget it. All right, so we just basically have to hold it head straight from here, uh, right, basically like right this way. All right, we'll do a little another. I don't know why I need to save again, but it's just a nervous habit sometimes. Autumn Shade Clearing. I don't even remember that name. Man, look at this. It's so moody here. I love the color palette, how everything's kind of like subdued. I do have a weather mod, which I'm not quite sure what it is. All right, yeah, this is looking really good to me. This is exactly the type of mood that this character uh, should be in. All right, I feel like I'm about to get attacked here. Nah, nothing. Just like an empty sort of rune or uh, just looks like some type of mystical thing. All right, so here we are. We've got the river right next to us. Although I can't really see it or anything, but we basically have to follow. I love how the ground is wet here too. It's like, I know it's raining a little bit, but it also feels like it's just kind of marshy right next to the water little extra, you know, sopping. All right, so there's the water. Something across the way there. Oh, stop and pick some flowers, of course. Uh, never pass them, them up if we don't have to. All right, so let's climb this hill here so we got high ground. In case anything down there near the shore. Spot something? We got a spider here. Alright, there it is. Alright, let's zappity zap that. And uh, I don't think we even need to poison our blades. We might have a little left over. Oh, well, we have been poisoned, so uh, <laughs> that spider sure turned the tables on us. And, uh. Well, we're just gonna use the. That was cool. It was almost like we dipped our sword in the poison gland or something. So now if we find another enemy, we have fresh poison on our blade. 
and maybe that's more it's not more potent in terms of stats but we can pretend that uh, it's just a better way to do it or something uh, than keeping it in the in the vial and dumping it on there you know it's just like get that stuff right from the source so that's a little nice little uh little bit of flavor there all right i'm gonna bust out the uh, staff maybe I don't have too many charges on this, so I do want to use it as sparingly as possible. But I also want to be using my uh, conjuration a bit more than I usually do. And we also, of course, have the crossbow, which we will definitely end up using. Uh, again, probably pretty sparingly. I don't want to necessarily be that type of character, but I will use that for range. And of course, a crossbow is like a very ideal weapon for a poisoner to have so you know you can just basically paralyze someone from across the room and they won't even know what hit them so we are definitely going to be doing stuff like that i'm not necessarily a stealthy character i'm more of like a i'm actually more of like an in your face intimidating evil you know mysterious stranger who like kind of wants to look you in the face and uh spook you out you know so I, that's more how I see this character. I don't see her as someone that's going to sneak up and stab you in the back or anything. Uh, but she is going to use some of that, you know. So like I said, I, I can definitely see her in a corner, maybe poisoning a crossbow and killing a few guards or something. Uh, but then confronting the final boss, you know, face to face, you know, something like that as far as the uh, storyline goes where, you know, like I said, she wants, she wants her presence to be intimidating that's why she walks around with vampire armor and stuff like that all right well something's watching us and i don't see it so this fog is really working on me and it's creating a nice mood for our character to maybe be a little nervous uh, does she senses something around and uh, isn't quite sure and uh, makes sure she saves uh at that point even though we probably just saved and would have to walk like a few feet and it's just a bunch of uh, hunters or something help will arrive soon oh oh we might Agreed. be helped we can't afford <laughs> i to think try that's again. us <laughs> okay uh that's the bodyguard mm -hmm. all right are you here to help yeah we are here ah, to help we're at the finally, bandit stand reinforcements have arrived okay. yeah the jarl sent us i was expecting the more though you'd better be good yeah <laughs> we're the best you kidding me good the place is crawling with bandits oh we nice lost some good men trying to take it oh early. my god all right well, we got only got three Brewer left planned this there's been bad blood between us since the king's death. Oh, uh, politics. But to invade my home, kidnap my family. Oh, my God. All right. Well, this sounds You bad. ask a lot of questions for a mercenary. All right, well. Just get in there and open the gate. We'll try and provide help once that's done. All right. Well, we'll do it. We don't need. Yeah. Yeah, what am my I getting out of this? Is everything to me. Clear the fort, and on top of the posted reward, you can have whatever items you'd like. Oh, wow, thanks, guy. I wasn't planning I on doing that anyway. More help, but our last attack went sour, and we're all that is left. I mean, one of you would help. Good Just luck. one of you would help. I mean, even at Morthal, when I went into a vampire den, which is way more dangerous than a bunch of idiot bandits who you, are, you know, uh, at least one of the guys went in with us. Uh, this is a little pathetic showing but then again they are recovering from a fight they already did go in and uh so they're probably nursing their wounds or whatever of course i'm well stocked in healing potions so that's no excuse either uh but we'll just let them camp here have their little uh picnic or whatever while we go in and do all the dirty work and uh basically i guess we're robbing this guy's home of every belonging he ever had or something along those lines but Probably mostly just taking bandit armor and whatever weapons they have, actually. Well, hopefully it's a nice wine cellar. <laughs> we, we we probably have enough wine. Probably got like a, a couple cases of wine in our inventory, but never enough, right? What's that? Oh, what's that? It's uh, your worst nightmare. One-handed uh, death machine here. All right, let's... Uh, Let's get, get our helper. We have a helper, uh, an avenging wraith. That, since we got three people swarming at us, 
Uh, better be safe than sorry and uh, get create a little distraction. Of course, we also have Miko distracting them as well. Our trusty mutt. Alright, and we did have that frostbite poison still on our blade here. So let's poison these two. Oh, I must be drunk. <laughs> Oh, uh, it's my spray there. Wow, there's actually four bandits here. All right, and we are about to die, so they hit us really hard. Uh, I kind of underestimated these guys. Now, here, if, here's one thing. You see that pool of oil that was at the top of the stairs. If only we had been using a fire uh, spell instead of the lightning. We could have, these guys would all be on fire right now. We could have lit that whole room on fire. See all that purple? That is oil. Oh, look, we got him. All right, so we're going to need to heal soon, but let's see if we can zap this guy first. Oh, there's our avenging rage. Um, second too late, because we got hit really hard right before she came in there, but not hard enough to kill us, so we won't have to redo this. And uh, we're going to use the healing spell here, because I think I might be running low on potions, actually, even though I made a bunch. Uh, I did use a lot of potions against the... Against the last battle that we had there. All right. Look at this. Oh, we accidentally backed up outside. So uh, at least that might give us a chance to regroup if this guy doesn't follow us out. And uh, he didn't. So, all right. Well, I wasn't trying to retreat that far, but he did back me into a corner there. So we might as well do this. And should we wait for our Magicka to come back? Now, I haven't been using the healing spell too much, but I do like to do a little bit of variety uh, instead of just using the same spell. I really do need some new spells. I want to get the, at least a rune spell would have been key in that situation. It's basically serving the same effect as lighting that thing on fire, but... All right, so we're going to poison this again and go back in for round two. Treva's Watch. Lucette the Unlucky versus... A bunch of random bandits. Actually, the guy knew his name, I think. Is that guy healing? Wow, that guy survived with a sliver of health. Or did I heal him? Like, did I put it? I don't know. That was weird. He did the healing animation. Oh, oh, I hit the frenzy. That's the frenzy potion. It just does the same type of color. So, yeah, look at this. I frenzied him against his... <laughs> against his fellow bandits and he just killed two of them for me and then started attacking my dog but that's just because the dog's the only one left oh and now i'm attacking the dog again because the dog was the only one left and i was already in mid-swing when the guy fell all right well yoink oh leather armor i found is actually worth some of the most valuable per pound it's it looks like it's around 20 per pound so that's a great deal. And we got some lesser and petty soul gems. Unfortunately, not filled, which is what we really need because we don't actually have a means of filling them right now. I need to get a soul trap spell or enchantment. Maybe I'll enchant my crossbow with that if I find it. I still have to find something that has that enchantment and then disenchant it. Well, I could always use what I find as well, so we'll see. I have not found enough uh, spell books and enchanted weapons yet. It's actually a little, I wouldn't say frustrating, but I wasn't really expecting to have this much trouble finding spell books and stuff. Uh, so we have been a little more limited in our spells, but that just means I'm emphasizing more on the poisons and stuff, which is fine by me. So like I said, I like the situational type of character development i don't really like to plan out exactly specifically what i'm gonna do it's more like well we're gonna be this type of character and then you know let let the missions uh determine exactly how we progress you know so i think it's going really well with this character honestly and we also could have knocked you saw that lantern above us oh we could have busted out our crossbow and knocked down that lantern and that would have lit that that uh, oil on fire as well so i already searched through here but i missed the sack of flour we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna leave that here uh we're gonna take the salt of course very valuable cooking and alchemy ingredient and don't want to have to loot all that again all 
All right, I love the color of that oil. It's a really nice texture they have there. All right, so let's uh, try the frenzy again, which was is really fun. It serves a bunch of purposes. It makes it so that, you know, there's one less person attacking us and there's more damage to the other people on their team. And it's really entertaining. It's uh, a lot more entertaining than, uh, you know, just doing extra damage or whatever some of the potions do. So uh, it's definitely one of the more fun ways to deal with enemies. It's just uh, making them frenzy against each other. So, oh, it looks like uh, this is outside actually. So uh, we didn't miss anything. It's, uh, sometimes there's like a little passage to another section or something like that. So let's see if we missed anything back here though real quick before we head into the next section. Cause I wasn't necessarily expecting that. I thought we would just go into another area. Oh, I just, all right. See if we missed anything up here. There's someone banging on something there's here. Someone yeah, someone is here. I did miss something. Oh, here's the people. There's his family. This is the guy's family. They're all dead. Oh, here. I got an order. Alright, you attacking my dog? Well, my dog probably started. Can't blame the guy. We're the one invading. Well, we're not invading his house. This is the other guy's house. All right. Oh, look at all this iron. That's a good chunk of iron. Uh, you guys said we could take it, right? <laughs> no, I don't need that hammer. And look at this. We have some elven boots. Wow, those are worth a lot. One forty-five for one pound. That is actually the best uh, thing we've seen so far. I think. The studded armor is not that bad, but the leather is much better. Now, battle axe. I don't know about that. Fur armor is not bad. And we are soon to be over encumbered, I am sure. Look at all the wine. Uh, we might have to leave that for now. Oh, a draft of regeneration. That's always useful. And more salt. Okay, so we are really getting hooked up in this storeroom here. Now, we have plenty of wine, like I said. And again, a lot of times I'll just save uh, more because I don't want to redo the looting than because I don't want to redo the fighting. So, I wouldn't even mind fighting that orc again. I don't even care like if I died some doing something else right now. But I really don't want to go through and do the loot again, especially when you're doing uh, weight and inventory management. It can be a real pain in the butt, so. All right, I forget where I'm going. Of course, I always get turned around in these things. And I know we came up through here. And, uh. All right, there was no other way to go here, I guess, except out. This just leads out. All right, let's see where this goes. Oh, there's a whole other section here. Oh, well, we have to open the door. Never should have. Now ain't this a surprise? What you gonna do? What you gonna do? What are you gonna do? You picked a bad time. To oh, we keep making her frenzy, but there's no one else to fight but us. But she did take care of her buddy there, so that was pretty cool. All right. Well, that was fun. Nico, are you all right? Jeez, Nico got hurt. Uh, she sliced him pretty good there, actually. So yeah, the frenzy definitely works a little better if there's like three or four enemies because, you know, once they kill the one, they're just going to frenzy after you, which uh, might make them a little more aggressive than normal. I don't even know. Probably the same, actually. Are you okay, Miko? And uh, empty barrel covered in cobwebs. No one's used that one in a while. All right. I hear someone else, so 
Again, we save. Now, in my other playthroughs, uh, sometimes I do save this much and I'll edit that little tidbit out. <laughs> but this one, I'm just kind of like doing it in bigger chunks just to do more of like a normal type of playthrough for once. Uh, I don't know. I just want to relax with this one and uh, get a little more in depth and less worried about like the presentation of making it more theatrical or whatever. All right, well, these guys were napping uh, or sleeping for the night. Oh, Miko is too powerful. Well, I'm not trying to get Miko to frenzy. I'm trying to get this guy to frenzy. And he's frenzying on Miko, unfortunately. So, let's try to get this one. Well, he's dead. And, uh... Oh, that's the chief. Whoa, that is the chief. So, that's not good. We have to poison him. What do we got? How about slow? Let's try slow, because this will also damage his health, so... Uh, I think I just hit it twice. Oh, he's too... Oh, we already had Frenzy on it. Okay, so he's too powerful for Frenzy, so... Slow will work. It doesn't say a level. And he sliced us good, so let's see what we have as far as healing goes. We can fortify our health, and we have a few minor left. And a also a regenerate here. We need it. And there are a lot of bandits on our radar, so this is going to be a long fight. And he's almost gone. He's going down. We slowed him down to nothing. And uh, he's dead. Okay. And there's more bandits there, so we probably should poison our blade again. And <laughs> save since we got the bandit. Alright. Get off my dog! Get off my dog! Zap him good. Oh, we have one also throwing lightning at us. So the battle of two lightning warlocks here. Oh, and uh, we got a human shield in between us. And he's also got a root by, uh, whatever it's called. Magical shield. A ward, a magical ward. All right, you're dead. Let's let our magic recharge uh, briefly. Miko got a little shock there. We're out of magic. Just a little spurt. All right, we may have to poison our blade here. We do have potions of magic also. Well, let's see. I uh, might have forgotten. To All right, we're just going to paralyze this guy. Not a big deal. He falls to the ground. And uh, someone's still zapping us. So we that wasn't even the uh, magic guy we hit. And this guy's not going down. He is not going down. So we're going to try to slow him. Wow, this guy was tough. Oh, and that guy wasn't dead yet. We had paralyzed him, and then he got up. And he was like, I am out of here. We have all this lightning and warlocks and people poisoning me. He was literally trying to run and hide, and uh, we sliced him down from behind. So that was an exciting fight, wasn't it? That pretty much had it all. We had magic flying everywhere. We had poisoning. We had dogs barking. And uh, maybe a little friendly fire in there, too. Sorry about that, Miko. But uh, eh, he doesn't seem shocked too much. Or uh, maybe it's a she. I don't even know, actually. <laughs> I guess it'd be Mika if it was a she. All right, we have a. All right, I am at maximum capacity weight, uh, minus nine pounds. I can take nine pounds worth of stuff before I'm over encumbered. Whoa, look at this, a rock warbler egg. That's a new one. Well, I wonder what that guy was doing carrying around this egg. I guess that was his lunch, <laughs> hard boiled egg or something. But we're gonna use that in a potion, I guess. And, uh,. We're really not going to be able to carry all this stuff. So I think what we're going to do is actually, since we are trying to save up for house, we only have 3,900 gold and we really need over 10,000 here. Plus we want to continue our study. Look at how much this is worth. Like this is, that's worth a small fortune right there. So uh, we're going to take that and dump some other stuff. But I think what I'm going to do is go back to Riften, fully encumbered, but not over encumbered, you know, and then come back here and make another trip back there just to sell like double the stuff. Because like it won't despawn in that time, I don't think, if we just do some fast traveling. And uh, we really need to make a 
big chunk of change at this point in the game. Uh, we normally, uh, we would probably have, you know, I would say 15, 20,000 gold right now if we hadn't been buying lessons this whole time. But on the other hand, we wouldn't have leveled up as much if we weren't buying the lessons. So it's a little bit of this and a little bit of that. But considering all the money we've made and adventures we've had, uh, we would definitely have like a huge amount of gold right now. But that's why I like spending it on that stuff because you do reach a point, you know, <laughs> after you get in a bunch of battles like this and, you know, when you raise your carry weight a little bit, uh, you're able to make a lot of coin as the uh, game progresses. So there's really no reason to have like 50,000 gold and a bunch of stuff you're never going to use. Uh, I'd rather spend it on lessons early and get that level up. And of course, add a little role playing uh, type of flavor to the game. So this is, you know, I'm not really talking about specifically what I'm doing here. We have a chest key. <laughs> we have a lot of stuff to get rid of, uh, which is not going to be easy. But like I said, I think we got to make two. And in fact, we actually are going to make more than two, two trips total to here. So uh, that's going to all be in the next episode because we're going to wrap this one up. Uh, we still got a couple more minutes left, but we're going to wrap this one up and then once we go outside and let the uh, family back in, uh, we're going to have a whole episode of selling in <laughs> the next one. Very exciting stuff. Well, we had a huge battle this time. I mean, I don't even know that we're done killing all the bandits yet uh, because we still have to go into a, another section of the, the fort. So there will be some more killing, but there also is going to be a lot of selling and leveling up and stuff like that. All right, Miko, get out of my way. All right, we're just basically taking the gold and the anything super valuable like gems, not milk. That guy's a milk drinker. They they call people milk drinkers in here that are uh, <laughs> that aren't you know quite up to the snuff as far as fighting goes. Uh, they're called milk drinkers. So that's pretty funny that that guy is literally a milk drinker and. Um, He's dead, so maybe what they say is true about milk drinkers and uh, they don't fight that well. Well, look at that. We got a down sword spell. That is actually a spell we could use as a conjuration student, but uh, we do have a sword that I like using, so I might not use that all that often, but we're going to uh, we're gonna learn that right now and uh, it might come in handy in combat, and it certainly will help us level up our conjuration when we use it so I might use that just for that aspect anyway we're gonna end it here uh, even before we get to the family and uh, thanks for joining us and we'll just show that off for a second and you know we'll have more episodes uh, next week of this and uh, if series over the weekend new episodes every day uh, thanks for joining us we'll see you next time <laughs>